Hi, this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville. Are you ready to make some labels for that precious work that you've been making for presents through the holidays? Good, because this is the class to do it. Now, there are going to be so many other options that you're going to come up with, but hopefully I'm just going to give you a few tips and a few tricks to just help you get a little nudge on your way to making the right thing. So without further ado, let's get started. So the purpose of today's class, like I mentioned in the intro, is learning or just being given the permission to make cool labels so that your work, as you pass it down and it gets passed on to others, people know why it was made and who made it. So I have uh, been making some interesting quilt labels. The one that you're looking at here that says Happy Christmas 2001. That was literally an extra embroidery design from the quilt that I had made. And I gave it to my mom for Christmas. And, you know, it's relatively big. This one is about 8 by 10. Uh, but today's lesson is using our Bernina embroidery machine to create a label. And we're going to create a label using the following techniques. With a pre-made design, using your machine's lettering, using the Bernina software 8.2, and then also doing a little bit with toolbox with lettering. Now, what should you put on a label? Well, really anything. You can put anything on the label. Um, think about that bef when you're making it, you know, who, who made it? Do you want to say made by grandma, made by Gail Schliemann? Do you want to put the date? Do you need to put a specific date to maybe commemorate a birth or is doing a year fine? Who's it going to be for? And what it commemorates and maybe the season. There's a lot of information on the Bernina blog. The Bernina blog is weallsew.com. And I just searched through their site, Quilt Label, and I came up with several options. So if you want to explore more after this video, don't forget to check out weallsew.com. In fact, there's a quilting, a quilt label in the Bernina embroidery software video right there on We All Sew. And the link is right there. Weallsew.com slash creating a quilt label in Bernina Embroidery Software 8.2. You can use pre-made designs in combination with lettering. The one made there on the left was using a built-in design on the Bernina 790. We're also going to talk about some embroidery machine techniques. Sometimes, as you can see, the gale on the left there, the G is a little separate from the rest of the letter, and that's how that design is made. But by simply taking the G, bringing that into the hoop, and then writing A-Y-L-E, and then combining those together, we are able to amend that discrepancy and make something look a bit more, have like it, and make something look like it has a bit more flow. Seasonal labels are really cool. There's a little Christmas label for a Christmas project that I'm working on. All right, enough show and tell. Let's really get started this time. <laughs> Before we get started, I wanted to just kind of give you a little bit of an overview of combining designs and using lettering on your machine. It's a little bit easier, I think, of the software, and sometimes we just get a little wrapped up in ourselves when we are clicking around on the screen. So we are going to find our letters here in this letter folder. Now, depending on what model of machine you have will depend on which, um, how many alphabets you see. Now, with the 790 and the 880 plus, you're going to get the alphabets not only written horizontally, but written vertically. And so you can see that here with the various fonts. The only one that we don't see that with is this outline font. And this is like a block quilt lettering block. So there's no satin stitching on this one. And then we have some others. The um, Old English one does not have a vertical version, but nonetheless, these are the choices that you get. Now, going back to the folder, we have our butterfly folder. Now, in the butterfly folder is all of our pre-loaded designs, and there's a ton of them. And if you haven't done this, you really should take a tour of what you have available on here so that you know what you may or may not be able to choose from. You have quilting designs.
Lacy Designs. I think this looks like an Argyle design. It's really cool. I am hoping to incorporate that into something one day. Little child designs, floral designs. Now, for this application, it is fun to be able to play with some of these designs that look like corners. For instance, when we want to make a border, before we even put lettering down, we can take something like this, go to our iDesign, and either make a copy, depending on what model of machine you have. You can do this on some of the models, and on others, you're just going to have to keep selecting it. But you can take your selected design, and you can rotate it, line it up like that, then you can take both designs together and use uh, this button, which makes a copy, and then use this button, which mirrors it. And now all I'm going to do is just move that into the center. So now I've created a frame that would be suitable for putting a label into, and that's really easy as well. I like this so much that I'd actually like to save it. So I'm going to close this area, go to my folder, and hit Save. And Save will either put it on the stick if we have a stick in it, or save it onto our sewing machine. So I am going to choose to save it right onto my sewing machine. Okay, so now that that's saved, and I can use that as a blank canvas for future projects, I'm going to click the plus sign, go to my font, and I am going to go all the way to the end here and use this font. And I'm just going to write capital M. Now, notice when you come into this, you have all of your uppercase letters. Then there's lowercase. So I'm going to write made space by. Now, if I chose, there's also numbers and special symbols. But all I want to write for right now is made by. And then I'm going to use my tools, my resize tool in fact, and my top knob to reduce it. And this little symbol here that looks like a chain, that is constrain the proportion. So that means when this one is a, is clicked and highlighted white, when we make this larger and smaller, no matter what, it's going to make it proportionately larger and smaller. So I'm going to just move that up there. And then I'm going to add Gale. And I'm going to write Gale in uppercase for the G and in lowercase for the rest of my name. And now that pops in to my screen too. And of course, I want to make this smaller. And I still want to make it proportionately smaller. Okay, perfect. And now I just want to write the year down here. And I want to kind of do it spread out. I'm going to write 2020. Um, I'm going to go back to a more standard font for this. Good old Swiss block. Can't go wrong with Swiss block. And see how I'm going to do the letters or the numbers here. Two, zero, two, zero. Okay. Now, that's a little bit too big for my liking. So I'm going to go to the resize. And this time, I literally just want to squish it. So I'm going to squish it vertically. See how I unclicked that link? Okay, I think I like that now. And now I'm going to just line that up there just like so. 
And notice how I can still play with all of the different layers of my design. I'm going to move Made By up just a little bit, and then I'm going to do the same with Gale, so I can make a little bit more room for the year there. All right. Now, let's look at our border. So I took this border, and I made a copy, and I rotated it. But then, remember, I selected both of these. Well, when you do that, these two pieces stay grouped together. That's just the way that the program works. But now that I'm ready to stitch this out, all I have to do is close my little X and hit my stitching tool. And now that opens up. And do you look, do you see over here under our colors that there's 15 colors? Well, that's because it's going to stitch all of the colors in this, all of the colors in this, all of the colors in this sequence, and then our letters. That is laborious. But thank goodness that on most of the Bernina embroidery machines, you have this nice feature, which is the color sequencing. So when I click the color sequencing, now it's going to stitch as four colors rather than 15, which will make my life a lot easier. So I'm ready to stitch this little bugger out. I'm going to open up this butterfly folder and just see if there's anything in here that strikes my fancy. Ooh, you know what? I really like this design. So I'm going to open that up. And now I am going to reduce the size of this just a little bit. And I'm going to reduce it to about 80%. Okay, I like that. And then I'm going to move it over to the side. And now I want to just write maybe a little bit of information just here. All I want it to say is made by Gale. And if you want, you could choose the year or whatever. And you don't have to write Gale. You can, you can write your own name, of course. So there's a couple ways that we can do this. Um, I'm going to hit the plus sign. And then I'm going to go back to my folder that has my fonts. And I would like to use this script font right here. And I'm going to write made by all in lowercase. So I want to pick the lowercase and then write M A D E space B Y and OK. And as you can see, that brings that into my hoop. Now I want to rotate this. And once again, I'm using my knobs to do that. And I want to rotate it minus 90 degrees. There we go. And now I'm going to line this up just about right there. Now, this is proving to be a relatively larger label. So I do want to reduce this bit of my design a little bit. So I'm going to go over here to our reduce icon. And I'm going to make this to about 80% as well. And now I'm going to line that up. And then I'm going to write Gail. Now I could write my full name. I could write mom. I could write uh, grandma, oma, whatever you choose. But I'm going to click this little plus sign so that I can write it again. Now this time I'm going to go for my name. And I want to show you a little trick. So that's my capital G. Now I'm going to write A Y. L E then enter or the check mark. Do you see how the A is a little bit further away from the G? I want to fix that. And so I'm going to go ahead and delete this one with my little trash can. And I'm going to type this in again. And the way that you get around this is by simply selecting G. I'm going to rotate it. See how I just clicked the 90 degree three times to get it around rather than using my multifunction knobs there. All right, so now I'm going to go back and write in lowercase, and you can see here we've got our uppercase, lowercase numbers and symbols. I'm picking my lowercase to write A, Y, L, E. And now back to rotate. Oops, I went around too many times. All right, and now that allows me to get even closer there without any weird spaces. 
and then I can use my little layers tool here to see everything. And I'm just gonna move Gail here a little bit. And since my G is already kind of separated from the rest of my name there, I wanna make the G larger. So I'm gonna use my enlarge tool and make this proportionately larger. Let's do 125%. Okay, I really, really, really like the way that looks. There we go. All right, now I'm ready to stitch this out. And don't forget when you're ready to stitch something out, all you have to do is determine your thread colors for your design and then hit your little needle. And now it's gonna stitch our little flourish design first, then it's gonna stitch made by Gale. And this reads this as four colors because it reads the flourish as one color, made by as one color, G as one color, and A-Y-L-E as one color. Um, that's where this little item comes in handy. And now that's gonna reduce that to two. So it's gonna stitch all the stuff in teal and then all the stuff in black. Let's do another one. Let's do something a little festive, a little something for the holidays. A lot of us are making things for our loved ones this year. So let's look through one of our seasonal folders. And I'm gonna use, this is actually a continuous line quilting design with these bells, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this as the background. So this is gonna stitch out first, then I'm gonna add some lettering. And once again, this is totally up to you what you would like to pick for a font. I think I'm gonna go ahead and choose this nice thin font here. And all I want this to say is Christmas 2020, and you know, as, as the top writing, and then at the bottom, I want it to say um, made by Gail or whatever you would, you would like it to say. Don't forget your number tab is down there. Now I'm going to go to my reduce tool. There we go. I like that size. I'm going to keep it right about there. And now I'm going to do my Made by Gale. And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pick a different font. I'm gonna pick this um, scripty one, all lowercase. And once again, let's reduce it proportionately. And then I'm just going to tack it over here for now. And then let's um, write Gail again, hitting our plus sign. And I'm going to go back to the other font that I did. And this time I want to do it all in uppercase. And I probably want that to be a little bit smaller. Okay, maybe a little bit bigger. Let's go to 75. All right, so now I wanna do something kind of neat here. I wanna do my made by at an angle. So let's see what some of our fun little options are. So I'm working on a 790. So you have this ability on the 790 and the 880 plus. We've got some word art. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my um, rotate tool and I wanna rotate this, yeah, just a little bit like that. 
I'm just doing a little bit of wiggling around here. So let's take our Christmas 2020 and do the word art. And the word art allows us to stretch things out with our top knob and curve things around with our bottom knob. Isn't that cool? So now let's put the Christmas 2020 above the bells, made by over the bells, and then Gale right at the bottom like that. And then another thing that I really like is I can even take my name then and space it apart a little bit so everything looks balanced. But I think that's pretty cool. And now of course we can stitch this out. And don't forget when we stitch this out, this is going to be four colors. It's the red bells, then Christmas 2020 reads as another color, made by reads as another color, and Gale reads as another color. So when we go to stitch this out, if you want it to only be two colors, you just click this button that is the red, yellow, and red. And now we have a two color design. Right, so I want to make a new design and I'm going to call it quilt label 01 and this is going to be just a label I stitch a whole bunch of to put in anything that I make, maybe a quilt, maybe a garment, something like that. So I'm going to keep this relatively small and relatively simple. So I'm going to start with my font and right now I'm working in the toolbox that has everything the lettering the monogramming and the editing and I need to start off by telling it what text do I want it to say and I want it to say made space by in all caps then it wants me to put in what kind of shape I want it to be. Well, I want it to be written straight across just like it is, but there are other options if you wanted to experiment with other ways that you can write a letter. Then we go to the alphabet, and I am going to stick with basic block. So let's just look here. Ah, there's basic block right there. So now that I've got that design, I want to kind of size this made by so that it's the size that I want it to stitch before I add my other bits to it. So I'm going to go over here to my finger and then I'm going to just reduce the size of this just about like that. I like it. Now I'm going to go back to lettering. And now I'm going to write my name in all caps. And now you see it appear there. I'm going to pick basic block and I'm going to stick with this shape. So now I'm going to select my finger and I'm just going to use this little arrow to get rid of that so I can see exactly what I'm working on. And now I want Gale to be the same width as made by. So now let's put that down there like so. I could probably make it just a wee wee little bit smaller. There we go. And I can use arrow commands on my keyboard to move it into place just so. All right, I like it. Now I'm gonna deselect. Now, what I want to do is write 2020 right in the middle. So I'm going to go back to my lettering, type in 2020 in this box here. That's not the font I want, but it is the shape. And I found a font I really like called Wired. There it is. All right, now my goal is to use my little finger and maybe make this a little bit smaller and put it, superimpose it right on top of made by. Perfect. Now, 
I have to change the thread colors because I don't want it to all be in the same color. I want Made by Gale to be in black and then 2020 to be something bright. So let's work with our Layers tab. So color number one is going to be black. So I'm going to pick color number one and then go to my Artist Palette. And then I just happen to know that 0020 is black. So now I'm going to select that. And I'm going to do the same for color number two. Now, color number, color number two is for the lettering made by Gale. But this last layer, I want to be a different color. I want something really bright, like neon. Let's see. Well, I don't really have neon represented here, but I'm just gonna go ahead with bright mint. Close. And select. And there it is. So I, I, I'm just happy to have it be two different colors. I can go to the, my thread chart later and play around a little bit with it. But now that I'm ready with this, all I need to do is put my USB stick in, hit my sewing machine button, and then send it to my stick. All right, I'm ready to make a quilt label for one of the super cute quilts that we just finished here at Bernina of Naperville. It's for our North Stars block of the month. So let's find our design that we're gonna use as a frame. I'm gonna open this design out of my Bernina 8 embroidery folder. And in that folder, there's lots of different things that we could be using. They're categorized and if you have the Bernina Embroidery software and you have not gone through this folder, I highly recommend it. But the design that I'm looking for is in the Alphabets and Monograms folder and it's called Swirl 1. There we go. Now I'm going to open it and now that gets pulled into our hoop. Let's just go ahead and zoom to hoop so that you can see I'm working here in the medium hoop. And now what I wanna do is actually put some information in here. So I'm gonna use the uh, toolbox section that has the digitizing drawer and I'm using the lettering. And now, like I said earlier, when you are making a label, you want to determine what you're actually going to put on the label. What kind of information do you want it to say? Do you want it to have any date? Do you want it to commemorate a certain celebration? Do you want to put first name, last name? What do you want to incorporate into it? Well, basically, because this quilt belongs to the store, I'm going to just label this as the North Star Block of the Month with our Bernina of Naperville logo on it. So the first thing I'm going to use is the lettering and I'm gonna write North Stars, enter. And then I actually even like this font. I'm gonna just um, deselect the hoop for a moment so that we can see everything that's happening here. So I'm just going to rotate this so it lines up in with this guy, but I need to make this a little bit smaller. So I'm going to use that. Um, I've got these black nodes around it and the corner one is going to let me proportionately resize this. There we go. Perfect. Now I'm going to use the lettering feature again and I'm going to write block of the month and I'm just making the uh, design choice to not make anything caps. So now I'm gonna hit enter. And I wanna show you something cool when you double click. This opens up your object properties folder and I'm right here in the lettering. So if I spelled block of the month wrong, or if I decided I wanted to write it as title case, I can make those changes right here in this little window. Now, what I'm going to do is select a run font. So run fonts are a little bit different than regular fonts because they're just the outline. And you'll see here that there's run cardigan, run freehand, run liberty. I'm going to use the run freehand. And then I'm not going to make any changes to the size. All I'm going to say is OK. And there is my font. And I'm going to rotate this 
counterclockwise two clicks because it goes in 45 degree increments. Then I'm going to select this again by left clicking until I get my little black nodes. And now I'm just reducing the size of that to fit. I might need to go just a little bit smaller. And now I'm using arrow arrows on my keyboard. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit because I think I can make it just a bit bigger. There we go. All right. North Star's block of the month. So then that leaves me a little bit of room to place my Bernina of Naperville logo. I've been tweaking it a little bit over here. So I'm just going to do a control A keyboard command to select all of it. Then I'm going to do my keyboard command, control C to copy, then go over here to the swirls and control V. And then once again, using my rotate icons up here, the 45 degree, I'm going to rotate it and get it just into place. Now, I actually don't have a problem sewing this logo over our swirls, but I'm going to go ahead and just make this a little bit smaller. and just maybe a little bit smaller. There we go. Now we're ready to save this onto our stick and stitch it out on our machine. For more information about Bernina embroidery software videos, for instance, to learn more about lettering and word art, don't forget to actually check out the Bernina international YouTube website. It's youtube.com slash Bernina International. So Bernina of America has put together a master Bernina Software 8 playlist, and these videos are in English. They're short and informative, and one of them that you see in the preview here is one specifically about lettering. So you can see you are going to want to watch that and give you um, more basic ideas with the software so that you can let your creative juices flow when you work with your quilt labels. Well, do you like our samples? This was our um, first one that we did right in the machine. Then we have our little Christmassy one. And then finally, our fancy one that we used in the software. Well, I'm not sure where all I'm going to put these, but I know for sure where this one is going to go. So hopefully you make some cool ones and uh, label your work and uh, show us. You know, we've got the uh, Bernina of Naperville Sewing Alliance Facebook page. We also have our, our regular Facebook and our Instagram, and we love it when you tag us. You know what else we like? We like it when you subscribe to our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And you can like, comment, as well as subscribing. And if you want to know when we upload more videos like this one, click the little bell. But in the meantime, make some labels. Because you want your work to live on. And you want to know who made it, you know, when everybody forgets who made it years ago. Okay, I'm stopping talking now. See you later. <laughs>